This is Parshas Ki Tetze. It's entitled Shabbat and Amalek, Two Sides of the Same Coin. So the Midrash asks a question which seems very strange, probably not keeping you up at night. As you know, the Parsha ends with the story of Amalek. And Amalek, we are commanded, Zachor Es Asher Salacha Amalek, where we have to be vigilant our whole life to remember how the Amalek attacked us for no reason. The Midrash says, yeah, but there's another, there's another uh, concept which has similar language. I wonder if they're the same or related. And that is the concept of Shabbat, right? Zachor Yom HaShabbat Kadcho, remember to keep the, sh the Shabbat day holy. So on first glance, these seems like polar opposites, right? Shabbat, you are basking in the beauty of of, of creation that God created the world in seven days and you're not working on that day because God didn't work and you have faith in God. And Amalek is that enemy lurking outside the door, always coming to attack us when we're weak. So what's going on? And then to make matters even more uh, interesting, the Medrash seems to bring a, par a parable, but it's kind of not the parable that I find in most cases. In most cases, the parable, especially when it involves a king, so the king represents God, and you find someone in the story that we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to worship God. But here, I believe the king is the one that we're supposed to sort of get a negative lesson from. The story is about a king who is having a big banquet, and when the waiters are going out and bring food to everybody, he says to his advisors, you know, I'm happy I'm thinking about how all the people in my kingdom who are supporting me and helping me stay in power. And then towards the end, when the waiters are going back empty-handed and bringing back the dishes, the party's coming to a close, he says, you know, I'm very unhappy now. I'm thinking about all those enemies out there trying to do me in. So it's kind of illogical, right? I mean, what do you expect? Do you expect the by the end of the affair that the people haven't eaten the food and the, the, that the uh, trays are not going to be empty. But it seems sort of a case where when things are going well, you're happy about how you perceive that you got to this secure state in life because of your friends and, and all that, and your, you know, your good alliances, your good political maneuvering. And at, at, at the end of it, when it draws to a close, you start to think, yeah, but you know, still this instability in my kingdom. Not everybody is for me. Some people have designs on my kingdom. So there's no faith in God in there. It's all about my political maneuvering. And I think that's an example of, that actually sheds great light on how to make sense of these two uh, concepts of Shabbat and Amalek, because as long as you have faith in God, I mean, let's face it, the whole story of Amalek started with a lack of faith, right? It says in one Pasuk, the Jewish people ask, Hayesh Hashem Birkirbenu Im Ayin. Is God really in our midst? After all the miracles and everything, they were questioning whether God was with them. And the very next Pasuk is the attack of Amalek. So if you have, if you have no faith in God, then of course, you know, you're going to see, you're going to have a philosophy which is very negative and you're going to see a Molek as this lurking enemy out there and uh, you're going to be vigilant because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have them surprise you. But if you have faith in God and you have sort of a Shabbat philosophy in life, then it's just the opposite. In both cases, I would say, in all cases, as we said so many times in the Medrash, God is sending us messages, and we're supposed to process the messages, we're supposed to grow from them, we're supposed to reconsider our deeds and our actions. So if you have a Shabbat attitude, you can grow from adversity, and you even can look back and say, wow, thank you, God. Uh, that was really excellent lesson I learned, and I'm so happy that I got to grow from this and, and go forward as a different, better person. But if you have an Amalek attitude, 
you're just going to see this as uh, someone out to get you and you're going to ignore the messages. And so I really believe that at the end of the day, it truly is two sides of a coin. Amalek and Shabbat, it's a, it's a philosophy that you have to choose. When something happens, it could either be an opportunity for growth or a missed opportunity. Have a great Shabbat.